Hello, welcome back students. Today we're going to take a break from sort of algebraic methods to talk about applications. We're still going to use algebraic methods to solve applications, but sometimes we just focus so much on algebra we forget to apply it. There are so many applications of rates of change, so so many applications of derivatives. I mean any area you think of. For example, let's think about um, Right now, vaccinations are really important as we're trying to get through this pandemic. And so perhaps every day there's a certain number of vaccinations that are given in the state or the country or something like that. Well, tomorrow it's a different number and the next day it's a different number. And so maybe someone's interested in studying the rate of change of vaccinations per day. Are the vaccinations per day going up, going down, staying the same? How quickly are they going up? How quickly are they going down? And so that would be an example of using derivatives or finding rates of change. In your book, in section 3.4, they go over several different types of, types of applications. Not a ton, but there's several in there. You can just use your imagination to think of others. And also later in the year, we study others. Um, but you might want to read that. You don't have to thoroughly understand every detail of every problem, but read it to get the general feeling of how rates of change and thus derivatives apply to a variety of different kinds of situations. And there's one in there that we're going to focus on today. We've talked about it before, position and velocity and acceleration, and in addition to that, finding total distance traveled. So for the rest of this lesson video, that's what we're going to focus on. So here's the problem that we're going to do as an example, and it has five or six parts. An ant is busily scurrying back and forth along a straight line path. Its position at time t is given by s of t equals 2t cubed minus 21t squared plus 36t, where s is measured in feet and t in minutes. Okay, so there's a straight line path and there's an ant, and it's just going back and forth. It's not going like off the path or anything, it's just back and forth on the path. That's the idea. Part A, find the velocity and acceleration functions for the ant. Okay, so remember that velocity is the derivative of position. In other words, v of t is s prime of t. So v of t would be, and we just have a polynomial function, a sum of terms. We can use the power rule and find the derivative of each term. The derivative of 2t cubed is 6t squared minus the derivative of 21t squared is 42t plus the derivative of 36t is 36. Okay, and the acceleration. So remember, acceleration tells you how fast your speed is changing. So how fast your velocity is changing. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. That means acceleration is the second derivative of position. Remember in our last lesson we talked about higher order derivatives, first derivative, second derivatives, third derivatives, fourth derivatives, etc. So if you find the acceleration, you're finding the second derivative of position. So a of t, I'll write over here, a of t is v prime of t, but it's also s double prime of t, the second derivative of s. So we take the derivative of our velocity and we get 12t minus 42 and then that's it because the derivative of 36 is 0. Okay, so we did part A. Part B, find the ant's velocity at time t equals 0. So we can just take the equation for velocity that we found in part A and substitute 0 in there and we get 36. Okay. Notice that that's a positive value, and if a velocity is positive, it means you're going in the positive direction. Positive velocity, positive direction. 
Okay, if the line was left and right, then that means we're going to the right. Or if the line is vertical, up and down, that means we're going up. So we would consider the right the positive direction or up the positive direction. We don't really know for this line. I'm also going to put units on here, so that was 36 feet per second. Nope, that's wrong, not feet per second, feet per minute. The units were minutes. Okay, we're gonna keep going on this problem and move on to part C. Find the time or times when the ant is not moving. So sometimes that's phrased when the ant is at rest. So not moving or at rest is when the velocity is zero. So that's a concept you wanna tuck into your brain. Whoops, what am I trying to write here? Velocity equals zero at rest. Okay, well we know the velocity equation, V of t, is 6t squared minus 42t plus 36. So we're going to set that equal to zero and solve for t. Find the time. And it just so happens that all of these terms are divisible by 6, so we can divide both sides of the equation by 6. And it also just so happens that this is factorable, so let's take advantage of that. That's not always going to happen. You could use the quadratic formula if it's not factorable, if it happens to be quadratic like this one. Set each of these equal to zero. And solve for t. So, we get two times when the ant is at rest. At time one minute and at time six minutes. So why is the ant at rest? Well, let's say at time zero, it's right here, and then at time one, I don't know if it's going left or right at that point, but let's say this is time one, it stops. Why does it stop? It could be that it was just tired and it stopped and then, then it kept going. Or it could be that it had to stop because it was gonna turn back around and go the other way. So we're going to take this into account when we're doing the final part of the problem, which is going to be to find the distance traveled by the ant. Part D, what is the ant's position at time 14? Okay, we're talking about position, so we're going back to the original equation and just putting 14 in for T. So that would be two times 14 cubed minus 21 times 14 squared plus 36 times 14. And that works out to be 1,876 feet. That seems like quite a ways to go for an ant, so they probably are getting pretty tired. Okay, there's more to this problem. This is kind of the grand finale of the problem. It's going to incorporate some of the other parts of the problem and we really have to think through this whole backwards and forwards, left and right idea to find the total distance traveled by the ant between time zero and time 14. So here's what we know. We know that the only times the ant is at rest are time one minute and time six minutes. So those are the only times the ant could turn around because if you're going to turn around, you have to momentarily stop to go the other way. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the distance from time zero to time one and the distance from time, excuse me, from time one to time six and the distance from time six to time 14. And the reason we have to break it down is because if you're going right, then you can get you want to count that as positive, but if you're going left and you don't split it up into all these different parts, that's going to look like a negative, and you don't want your positive distance and your negative distance to um, cancel each other out. That's not what we're looking for. We want to know literally how far did the ant go. Like if it was wearing its pedometer, we want the total steps it took. So to find a distance, you subtract the two positions. So we want position at time one minus position at time zero. And then for the second one, we want position at time six minus position at time one. And for the third one, we want position at time 14 minus position at time six. Well, in the previous part of the problem, we found that the position at time 14 was 1876. So we're gonna use that. 
because of what I was saying earlier about how depending on whether the ant was moving left or right, some of these could work out to be negative. What we're going to do is take the absolute value of each of these and add them together. And that way we get positives for all three. Okay, I already calculated for us s of one by putting one into the original function and you get 17. And s of zero we know is zero. And then for the next interval, I calculated s of 6, and that's negative 108. And s of 1 is still 17. And then finally, we already calculated s of 14. It was 1876. And then s of 6 was negative 108. So maybe if we think of our path for our ant as having like a 0 right here, I guess what they're doing is they're starting at 0. They're going to 17. But then they turn around and they go from 17 back down to negative 108. But then they turn around and they go from negative 108 over all the way to 1876. So that's the path of the ant. And this is time 1, and this is time 6, and this is time 14. Okay, so we just have to finish computing. So this one is 17. And then we subtract and take the absolute value and we get 125. And then we subtract and take the absolute value and we get 1984. Add all those together and we get 2,126 feet as the total distance the ant traveled in the 14 minute interval we were asked about. Okay, so the thing to keep in mind with total distance is figuring out when the object is at rest so that you can break it down into intervals and then make sure to take the absolute value of each of those distances before you add them together. So your assignment is to do the worksheet on position, velocity, acceleration, and total distance traveled. Thanks, everybody.